With feet of it outside, I needed a warm place by the fire to hang my snow-covered gear. How to make, or how I made, this fold-away drying rack that doubles as wall shelving for those snowless seasons of the year. Let's get into it. I started by roughing out the length dimensions of the frames from roughs on walnut. Then, at the table saw, trimmed out the inner and outer frame pieces. Before jointing and planing them square. Then, I turned to ripping four equal pieces for the rack spindles. And cut those down to 20 inches. Cranking the table saw to 45 degrees and using a simple jig, I trimmed the 90 degree corners off the spindles to create more dynamic edges. Then, with the lathe, I honed a half inch tenon on either end of each spindle that I'd sink into a mortise of the interior frame. Speaking of, on one end of two roughly one inch by one inch pieces, I cut a mitered corner so the rack would be able to swing away from the outer frame. Then, after clamping the interior frame pieces together to expose the mirroring faces, I used a knife and square to mark the height for each spindle, and drilled the mortises. With the pieces of the bottom frame roughed out, I turned to the upper shelves. I squared them, trimmed them down to size, and gave them a finishing level sand down before measuring and marking the lap joint recesses for the interior frame. Then, using the table saw cranked to a height of a quarter inch, I cut the half lap joints for each shelf in either interior frame. Before using a chisel to refine the recesses. With those cut, I turned to the mirroring lap joints in the shelf panels themselves. Then, to mirror the spindles, I again beveled the edges of three sides of the shelves to add an interesting detail and catch the light in a more dynamic way. With the interior shelves and frames roughed in, I used a compass to mark a rounded over end to one side of all four pieces and use the bandsaw to cut those out. With all the pieces ready, it was time for a sand down. While I tackle that, I wanna invite you to check out more behind the scenes content and to support the channel over on Patreon. Link in the description below. I finish off sanding with a quick high grit wet sand. Then, it was time to glue.
To finish off the glue up for the upper shelves, as well as make the pegs that would hold the lower rack in place, I took a fifth spindle to the lathe and turned enough for six pin dowels and four detailed pegs. Then use the bandsaw to cut each of them out. To tidy up the pegs, I added a quick chamfer on the detailed ends. Then added the structure enhancing dowel pins through either end of the top and bottom shelves through the frames. After that, I drilled the mortises for the pair of detailed pegs responsible for holding the rack when not in use, all the way through the outer frame and a quarter inch through the interior rack. The final two detail pegs were glued as secondary reinforcement for the lower rack to rest against when fully extended. And the last two dowels were glued into place and trimmed to sit flush to the outer frame face. As the last cuts, I made six keyholes from which the shelves and rack would hang, two for the upper shelves and four for the lower rack. Time for finish. I used a few coats of water-based polyurethane. Once that dried, I added these brass lid stay hinges to be the main support for the rack when in use. Then it was time to get to the business of installing. I used a level and measuring tape to mark the placement for the screws that would rest in the keyhole recesses. Then sunk the six needed drywall anchors and screws. And mounted the two pieces. To help ensure protection against water, I added a layer of walrus wax. With snowless months factored in, I wanted to make sure this rack made sense year-round. It gets the perfect amount of sun to be the main hub for all of these plants I'm desperately trying not to kill. And that's a wrap. Until next time. <laughs>